Morning guys, or afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world watching us. Thank you for joining us for this morning's Facebook Live. Um, I think most of you guys probably join us most Tuesdays. So Tuesday mornings, 10.30 a.m. UK time, we make something in the Facebook Live. Last week we did dinosaurs, and we're going to do dinosaurs again this week. I kind of did jungle animals for a while, and we're keeping with the jungle animal theme. So I think dinosaur theme now. So guys, like if you are using Saratino like me, and don't worry if you're not going to use Saratino, other pastes are, are fine to use. The cocoa butter is obviously, it's heat sensitive, so if it is a warm day, you've got hot hands, it will get a little bit softer and you have to kind of be able to leave it, put it to one side for 10 minutes, let it go back to room temperature for it to firm up. Um, I know somebody mentioned earlier in the community group that they weren't sure if theirs was faulty because it, it wasn't sitting hard and it was still a bit soft, but um, it turns out it's just because it's quite warm where they are. Um, so it, it, it doesn't ever set rock hard, like the Renshaw's Flower Modeling Paste kind of sets hard like pot. This one, it goes firm, but like these that I made last week, like to just touch them, they are firm, but if I pressed hard, I could stick my fingernail in that, no problem. I'm actually gonna start with the head. Then I can decide the size of the rest of it. So I think the last head I did on the pink one was 35 grams, so I might go a little bit smaller. Let's see what we've got here. 29, yeah, just, so that's 30 grams, that's okay, yeah. Yes, Deirdre, we loved your Tasmanian cookies. Oh, Thank you yes. very much sending pictures of them. <laughs> I hope it tasted good. That reminded me, I've still got to do a Tasmanian Devil. Just in case I forget. I'll, maybe I should do like an Australian theme after dinosaurs or something. After my dinosaur theme stuff. I'm gonna try with about 30 grams. Do I think 30 grams or should I start with more? Mm, we'll start with this, we can always redo it if not. Okay, so I've got about 30, 30 grams. So this one was 35 grams. The one that I did earlier. So this should be just a little bit smaller. I figured if it's smaller, it's going to look more like the baby one and this one could be the mom. And then usually, like if you're doing cutesy, the heads are very big compared to the bodies. Which I know it wouldn't be like that on a real life dinosaur. But on these ones, it's fine. Okay, so we'll start with the ball. Just try and roll out the creases and cracks. Because my hands are very warm, I'm just going to put a little bit of corn flour on my hands. I'm trying not to knead the corn flour into the paste itself, just keep it on the outside, it just stop it sticking to me. Okay, so first of all, I want to try and roll it to more of a teardrop shape. So I'm trying to squeeze one end between my hands. Just got one quick query for yes. you. Um, obviously with that, somebody's asked, how do you stop your mats moving? We actually have non-slip mats under our mats, don't we? Yeah, have I got one under this one today? I hope you do. Yeah, have you. Sometimes I forget and I push and it slides. Um, yeah, just non-slip mats underneath. Yeah. You basically buy them from most home depot shops. So yeah, you can usually cut them to size. The only thing is sometimes I cut mine really small and when it's just a small mat in, in the middle underneath this, I can feel like where the edge is. So like my mat kind of dips over the edge. So I'd cut it almost to the same size as your mat if you're using a non-slip mat. Okay, so we're gonna start with that kind of teardrop shape, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut a bit for like this piece. I need some dinosaur experts to tell me what this is. And no, no rude comments when you make this, please. This is where you're gonna see why the pink was not a good idea. Okay, so at the back of the head, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna have to be careful because it kind of squashes the head when I do this. So we cut a little bit off at the back, or not off, but we cut. And then I want to kind of bring it round. In fact, you know what, I'm not gonna use the knife for this, but I'm gonna use my modeling tool to bring it, can you see, round and up a little bit here the same on this side. <coughs> I'll just roll that together a little bit like that. This is where I'm waiting for lots of comments now. <laughs> Actually this one doesn't look as bad as the last one me looked when I made it. Some people might know what you mean, might not know what you mean. To be fair, I was oblivious to what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, I know you were, Richard. So you're doing well today, got over 2,000 watches at the moment. So we're gonna put like an indentation in here. This is this is where I'm waiting for people that are just tuning in. I know this looks a bit weird. I promise it's a dinosaur and it's the dinosaur's head. I know you really can't tell that crease is just in a really unfortunate place as well. So this bit's gonna be like its nose. If I want it to look more baby-like, I don't wanna lengthen the face too much. Yes, this is a face by the way, for those of you that have just tuned in. 
we've got our basic shape. Let's pop in our eyeballs. So, when the eyeballs are in here, it's going to start looking better. Um, I'm just going to use these chocolate covered like sprinkles. These are 10 mil pearls. If you don't want eyes as big, go for smaller pearls. They're absolutely fine. I might actually just try pushing a little bit of a hole in first. So I'm gonna go at the top of the cheek, so kind of about there. See if I can get it in a similar place on this side. Mm, I think one's further back than the other. Let's see if we can sort that out. Let's put a tiny bit of water, just a small bit of water, or you can use edible glue if you prefer, guys, in that. And then we'll just pop them in place gently for now. <laughs> They're gonna need squeezing in a bit more than that, okay? So I'm gonna push them in and down a little bit. And we can always give it a little eyelid as well. So if you're worried that it sticks out too much and you don't like the look of it, we can give it a little eyelid. But before I give it an eyelid, what I'm gonna do is just put the pupil on. So I'm gonna use my black edible pen. This one actually doesn't feel as soft as the other one did earlier, so that's good. I'm gonna draw like a black oval on here. I'm trying not to catch the face itself, so try and just keep it on the sugar pearl. If you don't have the sugar pearls, just roll a piece of white modeling paste and it, it'll do the job just fine. I just like the pearls. They're nice and easy and they don't squash. Sometimes if I roll the modeling paste and I don't give it time to dry, I squash it when um when I push it in. Okay, so let's try and do on a similar size on this side. I say similar size because you never ever get it the same. Try and leave a little white bit in the middle or slightly to one side of the middle. Okay. It's not quite the same, is it, on each side? Usually you don't look at them too much from the front, do you, on the dinosaurs? Or maybe you do. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like with some little eyelids, actually. I might give the other one eyelids as well. So I'm going to take a really tiny piece of pink. In fact, I'm going to put some cornflour down because I know it's going to stick to me or the table. And I'm going to press it down. It's still stuck to me. Okay. And I want a small knife. I'll use my craft knife for this. I really should probably change the blade on this now. And I'm just going to cut a small little arch off the top. Let's see if we can do the same on this side. The bigger the semicircles on this, just obviously the more of the eye itself it's gonna cover it's gonna cover and then it'll look a little bit sleepier. So I just want a very tiny amount of water near the back of each eye, so on the white bit. I actually could have gone a bit bigger with these. Richard's still. Oh, they're still coming these comments. Yeah. Just but as long as the texture isn't vain if you're using a texture mark. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this one without texture. Yeah, just zooming out a bit slightly, a bit closer. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just trying to put the eyelid around kind of the back of it almost. So like this bit. Sometimes if I put it sort of so it's angled further to the front, so the bottom comes across that way, it makes them look angrier. So I don't want it to look angry. So let's give that in there. If that one's slightly smaller than the other eyelid. Just trying to push it on with my Dresden tool. Might actually look nice if put a little line along the edge. I'll leave it for now and then we'll decide in a bit what's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to use my balloon tool to work out where I want the edge of the mouth to come to. So I think about here. The higher up I bring it, the more smiley I think it's going to look. I think. Okay, so dip at this side. Let's try and put it in the same place on the other side. You can even use the bigger one if you want. Just run your fingers gently over it because it doesn't want to be like an obvious circle. Like it wants smoothing at the edges. Okay. Now what I want to do is draw a little line from here down across the front. And we're going to take it up to this line. I might even cut into this and have an open mouth like I did on the other one. I can't decide. Kind of looks cute closed though as yeah, well. Yeah, it's looking pretty cute now. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little line under here so that I know where I'm going to add colour later. And then 
had some little, little lines. I don't know what dinosaurs' mouths are made out of, but... Just, uh, can you... Wrinkles. I'm going to call them wrinkles on it. I don't know if they're technically wrinkles or not. Can you guys see these, or is my hand in the way? No, it's all right if you... Does it still look like a baby, or have I made it look old with these little lines? Bring your hand up a bit, that's all right. Is it looking slightly better? Yes. Okay. We need to put a ridge in now along here. Well, you don't need to, but I'm going to. Can you see along there like that? Just so it's got a bit more shape to it. Okay. I'm going to try and do the same on the other side. Just be careful that your black pen has dried as well because you don't want to smudge the black. Can you not see what I'm doing? Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is cut. I know. Do you know what I'm going to? I'm going to open the map. I'm going to let it settle a bit first because it might squash if it's, it's still a little bit soft. So I will open the map. I'll do it in a little bit. I'm just going to use a piping nozzle actually for. So that let me show you what I textured it with earlier. So I used the dragon skin one. It's called yeah. the dragon skin, isn't yes. it? This and I just kind of dabbed it all over. But I'm thinking I'll go for just a few dots on this one. So I'm just gonna use a little piping nozzle. You can use different sizes, sized ones to this. This one's a number two. I don't actually, does this show up or not on the um? Uh, it's quite light. In fact, if I'd have only put a few on it, it probably would have looked more like freckles. Yeah, it's holding there a second. We're gonna do it in a different angle. I said I wasn't gonna texture it as well. Look, and I have, haven't I? I promise when we get colour on it's going to look completely different though. Okay, so the head's a bit smaller than that one, but it doesn't look a huge amount smaller, does it? No, no. But that's okay. I might give this one eyelashes as well. Not eyelashes, eyelids, but then I can give it eyelashes as well. After that, maybe. Because those of you that didn't uh, join from the beginning, normally I would try and make these solid paste, but to try and keep the weight down, just because I'm doing it all in one go, they're not getting very long to set. I'm gonna actually put a bit of polystyrene inside the bodies. So let's see how much polystyrene, how much weight do we want? So that big one that I did earlier has got 113 grams of paste in the body, but I want this one to be much smaller. So let's see what we've got here, 66. I think that'll be all right. And it's a four centimeter polystyrene ball. So you can do it solid. You don't have to have this ball in the middle if you've got plenty of time to work on it, okay? But if you're gonna sit and do it all in one go without giving any of it any drying time like what I'm doing, then you're gonna need a bit of polystyrene just so that the legs will stick into something solid, so the polystyrene ball, but also then there's slightly less weight so the legs won't squash as much. Okay, so we'll roll that into a ball and then what we'll do is we'll try and create a little dip and let's put some water in here. And I usually end up with air bubbles in this. It's normally because I haven't put water fully on the inside of it. Okay, so we're gonna push it on. And then we're gonna gradually push it around. A few people saying they're looking cute already. Oh, thanks. Okay, so keep putting a bit more water in that edge bit. Try and squeeze out any air. If you do get air bubbles, it usually is formed between the polystyrene and then um, the paste, and I can usually just pop it out with a knife. You just move. I'm gonna have to move these out of the way. I'm running out of space. I'm sorry. Okay, can you all remember how much paste I put in the body? Because I didn't write it down, so. <laughs> you can always rewind, because I've already forgotten how much paste it was, but I did say it, so rewind and watch again if you've forgotten. You can ask me, but I will, I will have forgotten <laughs> still. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and rub out like the creases and cracks in this. And there should be enough paste that I can pull a tail and a neck out of it. If you've put your paste around the polystyrene ball and you're thinking, oh, it feels, the paste feels very thin everywhere, then there's not gonna be enough to pull a tail and a neck out of, okay? So I'm gonna, so I'm kind of squeezing and pushing the paste to one side now for my tail. Still getting a bit sticky. So that's cornflour that I'm putting on my hands, remember guys? awkward this shape it doesn't want to roll 
Yeah, got a few people out. Six, six grams. Yay, people are listening. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so this bit, can you see? I'm pulling it out and don't worry if it dips in a bit more. Whereas that one, can you see, comes straight from the ball out like that. This one can dip in a little bit. So I just need to make sure I've got enough to get neck out of. Just watch out for the polystyrene showing. Like if you press too hard, too quickly, you'll find that you'll end up revealing the uh, polystyrene. So I'm kind of pushing it so that it's closer to the bottom. So the bottom edge actually like will have the neck on. So it looks like it's leaning forwards a little bit. I could have actually left its neck a bit thicker, couldn't I really? Mm, no, I think that's okay. I just kind of rolled it, but I didn't fully cover it everywhere. I just wanted to get a little bit on the back. And I kind of did that as well for bits that were harder to get to. So like in the back of the neck, if I just go in with that, you can just go over it as many times as you want. I'm not as bothered about having it all on the tummy. It, some of it will press out when you're touching it as well. So once it's all put together, we can always go back over and dab onto it a little bit more anyway. Two pieces the same size. I'm gonna watch what I say, two pieces the same size. I'm gonna roll slightly on one side. Can you see so that we're getting one end a bit smaller than the other. And I'm gonna flatten this end. This is gonna be my foot, okay. And then this bigger bit at the top will become like it's, is it's thigh, hip? We'll go with hip. Okay. We're getting a lot of uh, dinosaur names coming in. Some of them, I'll be honest with you, I can't pronounce. <laughs> um, Are they all the same? Well, no, we've got, I mean, to be fair, one that I didn't think of, um, Blue the Velociraptor, or a Velociraptor in general. Oh, um, I thought you meant you were asking what type of dinosaur well, this was. Well, we're suggestions for next week. Oh, yeah, sorry, I it's forgot a, you'd ask for suggestions. Somebody said it's a Parasaurolophus. Oh. Or like... I, I think one of the pictures said uh, Hadrosaurus or Hadrosaurid or something. I might have said it wrong. Um, these are going to go near the back on here. I might even actually go a bit smaller with this round bit here. So if I want to go a bit smaller, what I'll do is I'll put it in. Oops. And then I'll just cut a bit off like that. Just to make that a bit smaller. Let's do the same on this one. It's kind of like a chicken drumstick, isn't it? A little bit. Another technical term for uh, bigger modeling. A little bit like a different drumstick. Okay. Then I can play around with them like a little bit when it's when it goes on in place. But I'm gonna need a cocktail stick in. So guys, tell people not to eat these if you're putting so many sticks and things in like I am doing. I personally, like even if you're not using the polystyrene ball, I would still probably put the stick or skewer within the leg otherwise I think it's it's gonna struggle to stand up unless you do give the legs quite a bit of drying time so I'm going in here which is about half just above halfway down it's basically this big hip thigh bit will stick on the side of it but this will have to go into the dinosaur itself and then what I'm gonna do is in fact I'm gonna put a bit of water on the inside of these first otherwise I'll forget so that cut edge is gonna be the bit that goes against the body, so we'll put some water on there. Okay, and just make sure you've got it at the right angle. So I'm gonna want it tilting downwards a little bit, and then I'm gonna push this. Ooh, I might go a bit further in there, so that I can feel it's gone into the polystyrene, you see. If you want to shorten the leg, you can shorten the leg. Just make sure that whatever piece of polystyrene you're sticking it into, this um, cocktail stick's not longer than it, so. I'm gonna make that a bit shorter. Where did I put my wire cutters? So I'm gonna cut a little bit off the end of there. Oops. Thank you. Sorry, hopefully it'll still go into here. In fact, I've got a hole there. Let's try putting it in that hole. It's actually quite tall, this dinosaur. Taller than I was expecting it to be. Let's see, no. Let's try and get this one in the same place on the other side. I've seen a few people mention about, obviously you could use you could do this similar sort of idea with if you're working with like modeling clay, could you? Yeah. Yeah, you can do it with modeling clay. Just trying to push this in. He's, he's leaning to one side. I put that in a bit wonky. In my polystyrene. There we go. 
He's not leaning as far forward as I thought he would actually. But that's fine. I think he looks okay still. I'm just going to use one and snap in half because I think it's plenty big enough. So these are going to go in about here. And I'm just going to prop up the body for the time being with them. And then we'll actually stick some proper legs onto that in a bit. Does he look like he's leaning forward still or not? Maybe if I bring the tail up more. And where's my little tail jam at? Just going to go back over those bits on his back. Him or her, I don't know if it's a boy or girl yet. And then we'll texture my it a little bit. Now I can see that I am, I've been playing with it a lot so I can almost see the polystyrene coming through. So just be really careful. If you've got longer, give it a bit of time in between, okay, to try and firm up. Otherwise, you will keep sort of squashing it. Okay. I use this to kind of push in to create little toes and wrinkles let's give it some wrinkles some little lines a couple of wrinkles under the tail maybe just there hopefully it's making sense what i'm doing we can give it some wrinkles at the front and on its neck and stuff as well so his neck will still move around a little bit. We can alter that. If it is very soft, like it won't harden it straight away, but if you put a little bit of CMC into something, it'll help it set a bit harder. Quantities, I guess. Um, this is why I don't work with fondant and CMC because I actually don't know really what kind of quantities you put in things. It's very much guesswork. But it does actually mix okay in with the modeling paste. The modeling paste shouldn't need it. It's just that because it's so warm, and I'm worried about it just squashing a bit. I'm just putting it in there for extra strength. So if you're adding it into modeling paste, you shouldn't really need very much. Let's see how much, I'll just weigh how much I've got here and then you guys know I'm probably gonna cut it down. So we've got 10 grams, I think it is gonna be cut down. But I'll just flatten the end. And we'll do the same on this end. I think it's even, they always come together at the end, don't they? Mm. They do. Generally, they're not always as I plan, but that's fine. As long as they turn out half decent in the end, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so we've got like a little long thin piece there. Just make sure it's thinner than the back leg. That's all because the front legs aren't, as, aren't quite as big. Okay, and it's much longer than I need. So if you hold it against your body and you want it to come like part way up on that body, I'll cut it a little bit of a slant. See if we can get the other one a similar size. Have I got that in shot? Okay, you're on, you're on the lowest camera. Okay, so we've got those two pieces. Like I say, similar is okay. I won't ever get it quite the same. Okay. Hmm. On the other one, because it's bigger, I could move it easily. It's not gonna move as easily on this one. So I'm gonna want a bit of water. Let's put a bit more on the, on the top bit, the cut, and the cut is gonna go towards the body and I'm gonna slot that onto my bit of stick. And then I'm gonna push that, can you see, onto my body there. Yeah. Do you see it? And then on this one, I want, instead of the knee to come forwards, I want it to go backwards, so I'm pushing in here. If you can't get your finger in, uh, just use a modeling tool or even paintbrush handle to press that in. And then the tricky bit is getting behind to make it look like the, is it knee or an elbow? I don't know. I'm gonna call it a knee at the front and an elbow at the back, which makes no sense. Uh, but just make sure, can you see it's dipped backwards there? I don't know if it's front legs actually look quite long, don't they? Let's put those little toe bits in. I know it's not realistic at all, guys. <laughs> But that's fine. I don't know. I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna put a stick through here. You can use wire if you want. Or if you've got plenty of time to let it dry, let it dry, but make sure it's nice and flat there so that that will balance with a bit of um, water or like royal icing or glue, edible glue onto it. So you don't have to have a stick, but can you can see clearly that mine hasn't had long enough to dry and hold up on its own. 
So what I'm going to do is try and put a stick in. I need to work out an angle where I can put this through, where it still looks like a bend, but not kind of show anywhere. So we'll have to put it in there. So this is just to strengthen it, like say, this is kind of a bit makeshift because it's not had that drying time, okay? Okay. Can you guys still see that? Probably need another bit of a stick actually so that there is something to pierce its head onto at the moment. I'm not gonna need much of one, just a short piece. So like I say, with, if you're doing it the same as me and you're doing it all in one go in a bit of a bit of a rush, just be really mindful that the stick's everywhere and if you were to give this to somebody, they wouldn't be able to eat it, okay? So let's put some water under the head or you can even put it on that bit. And let's push this on in place. He could be looking back on itself. Can he look that way? Well, you could, yeah. Oh, I don't know which way it looks best. Which side of his face looked nicer? I'm not sure. Let's see if he can do it looking back on himself. Yeah, it's starting, it's starting to come together now, isn't it? Yeah, okay. You managed to recover this one. Just about, maybe. <laughs> just about, yeah. I know, it sticks a bit close to there. So you want to then just try and push Am I at the wrong camera now, Richard, for people to yeah, actually see what I'm doing? Right, Just try and nudge the neck up tight to the head. Yeah. If you're worried that it's still moving about, because can you see it is moving? He's moving a little bit. I could just prop that up until it's set. So sometimes I just use my cornflower pouch and I'll push it sort of under the neck so that the neck doesn't move too much. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna run my knife through. Oh, sorry, where I was supposed to wait for you, wasn't I? Yeah. Let me pull his head off a minute. Uh, you know, you're not on that. Well, can you see his head? Yeah, you're on top camera now. Okay, so try and just cut through where the line was. To you a bit, to me. That's it, yeah, perfect. Okay. Oh, we've gone a little bit uneven there on that side. And then we can open that up. I think it would be the bottom one, wouldn't it, that would open downwards. Like that. Maybe you should have teeth. You see where it's wet and sticky from the water I put on. Should I have teeth or not teeth? No, because I don't know where I put my white. Um, I was gonna say I'm gonna give him some teeth, but I don't know where I put the white modeling paste, so he's not gonna have teeth. But he's got an open mouth now. Just check you're happy with the cut. I did go slightly off the line that I'd drawn earlier a little bit. If you want him to look happier, use the other end of your dressing tool and we'll just push in there. So we get a more obvious little line. Right, okay, so I'll try pushing this on again. Do we think definitely this way then, Richard? Uh, maybe not quite as severe, but it could be looking back there. Just watch your head. Okay. Yeah, maybe he's not so cute on that side. I'm not sure. Hmm, all these decisions. If I, were, if I wasn't on a Facebook Live, this would take me about 45 minutes to decide what position the head itself is just going to go into. Mm. I don't know. Shall I just leave him like that for now? Let's do little eyelids again. Oh no, I need more cornflour. Just seeing if there's any cornflour left in the cup that I can just make do with. That's fine. I do actually have several cornflower pouches on the go somewhere. They're just put away in a cupboard. So can you remember how we did it for the other one? We cut a tiny little curve off the top. And if you don't want to do a ball and squash it, if you want something a bit more accurate than me, you can actually just roll out your piece of paste and use a circle cutter for a little circle. Just put in this bit back. I don't like to waste any bits. All the little off cut bits I always put back because I can reuse them. Which was the brush I used for water. How is it taking me almost an hour? It's because I'm so indecisive with stuff, isn't it? Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of water at the back of the eye, being careful not to catch the black bit that I drew on earlier. If your brush is a little bit damp, sometimes you can use that as well to pick up small pieces. And then let's see if we can nudge that on there. Yeah. Do the same on the other side. Sorry. This one's a slightly different angle to the other one. Let's roll 
Roll it nice and thin. She doesn't need like massive, massive eyelashes. They still usually end up bigger than what I think they're gonna look like. Roll a nice thin bit again. Okay, a little bit more water just on the very edge. I think there might be a bit of water on the edge, but just to make sure, again, being careful to avoid the black pen, otherwise we will smudge that. Also the sugar pearls, it's chocolate coat it with like a coating. So if you get them really wet, it will dissolve the coating rather than just sticking this onto it, it'll just dissolve. Okay, so I want the point on the inside. Oops, I need to go along the edge. Okay, and then where it meets the outside edge, what I'm gonna do is, can you see that there? Yeah. I'm gonna cut a bit of an angle outwards. I don't think I cut through quite enough Sorry, there. Push it back a little bit. I can't see what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know. So they're not like big fancy eyelashes, it's just like a single, single line. Sorry. I always forget you get a lot more in your brush than you think, so dab it off on the kitchen roll. I want it to darken just certain areas first. I'm actually not going off the picture at all. <laughs> just doing what I fancy. Can you see it? Okay. Just. It is quite a subtle colour actually on this. I should have, I could have maybe gone for something a bit brighter. Can you see it on the legs? Yeah, you're top down at the moment. Oh, am I? Oh, I didn't yeah. realise it was top down. So I'm going for like kind of the front of the legs. So you want a bigger, fluffier brush for this because it's sort of larger areas. Well, this size is plenty big enough. And do you find, good question, do you find pink fondant fades? Um, it's modelling paste is this. All my modelling paste fades depending on where I put it. Um, when it's just in here, like in our room that we're in now, doesn't really seem to fade too much, but when I put it in the window, it fades a lot. My modeling paste doesn't fade as much as fondant does though. Like the fondant I use fades a lot quicker, doesn't it? Yeah, if, it's direct, if it's in direct sunlight, it does bleach the color quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, so the pink flamingo that's in our shop window, like our shop window gets a lot of sun to it, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, um, you, you, it was only in there a week and the front half is really now pale and the back half of it that obviously isn't facing the window is still quite bright pink. Um, that's the brand of powder dust you're using? Uh, I'm using a mix of the rainbow dust ones and the fractal ones. Thank you. Uh, could you make the body out of Rice Krispies and Marshmallows? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I'm too lazy. Um, Sometimes it's just time. It gets, it? yeah, it's just time. Because I don't really pre-plan things, it's just a very much a case of what I've got to hand sort of around me each week. Um, and I never have the marshmallows ready made, unfortunately. Okay, so let's try and get a bit more pink on her head. Mm -mm. I want something that's a nice lilac-y colour. Actually, actually that will, that we will use that one. We'll try that one. <laughs> I'll try the plum truffle one. I'm going to try a little bit on its headpiece thing. it's still quite a pinky colour this one. Mm. So can you see because it hasn't set properly I'm still trying to keep hold of it with my finger a little bit otherwise it's just going to move because it hasn't had time to set and I know you're not supposed to blow on them. Um, uh, good comment here about a, a, you could use a little bit like Bishop's Purple on its stomach. Yeah Bishop's Purple. I don't know where my Bishop's Purple has gone but that would look nice. I think the fractal ones actually have got some quite nice purples in that I should have probably used. I don't know, have I not got Bishop's Purple open anywhere? Probably got Minion Dust. Sending Richard off on some colour hunts. Mm, you can tell like a little bit that it's got purple on, but I was thinking like a lavendery kind of purple would look quite nice, would you, would you but like it's it? fine. It's really like it's mouth area that has a completely different colour to it. Oh, you're on this camera here at the moment. 
So I'm kind of going around, like, almost like the jaw. I'm trying to make it darker and darker as it reaches the very edge of the jaw. I'm hoping that I've still got this in shot so that you guys can see while well, Richard goes on a hunt for my colours. Yeah, I think maybe I need that to be more obvious, another colour. And if you want a more obvious colour than like the dust, you can um, mix them with alcohol and use them as a paint instead of like a dry dust. Well, that's bright. What do you think? I was thinking well, it's not that bright. On camera, not that bright. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to have to be fairly gentle because, like I say, it hasn't had time to set yet. You alright Richard? Yeah. Now, I've dropped powder bits inside its mouth. I might have to maybe add a bit of black in its mouth so it just looks darker inside the mouth. I have no idea if I'm in shot, guys. You are at the top of the camera at the moment, top of the angle. So I probably won't dust both of them. Does it look better with the blue? Yes, it does. It's good. Shall I add a bit of the dark blue on it? So which blue did I say it was? Petrol blue, this one. But then I've mixed it with the paler blue as well. Just trying to get the petrol blue on its own at the bottom. Or near that bottom bit. It's lost its kind of pastel -y look, hasn't it now? concentrate mainly on one side of the face for now so you guys can see it a bit more or maybe I should have gone for that bright purple that you got me I cannot make a decision at all do you know whenever we go for food not that we do very often now um, I'm a nightmare when we go to a restaurant people come and say are you ready to order and I'm like no give me another minute give me another minute give me another minute because I cannot make up my mind about anything so we're just going to put some stripes on. So just a smaller brush that I've got for this one. I quite like it now the stripes are going on. Loves a bit of contrast, doesn't it? Yeah. I can't remember. It was the darker purple, wasn't it, that I'd used? Right, you're going to top down now. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's try changing the size of them a little bit. So we'll go for a shorter, fatter one. And then we'll curve this one a bit more. Like I say, I don't really know what what they're supposed to look like. But it's not realistic anyway, is it this? So I guess it doesn't really matter. We can do whatever we want with it. Mm. There's a good comment, you should pick restaurants with small menus. Yeah, I know, as long as they've not got more than two items on. Yeah, you would say small menus makes it easier, it does not. <laughs> I am a nightmare to go out with. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of try and change the shape it's of them slightly. It's starting to look pretty cool now. As we go around the legs, so we're curving it on the leg itself. It just look very different, doesn't it, with the patterning and stuff on. And it's up to you whether you wanna take the stripes all the way down to the bottom of its leg or not. I'm trying to get them more on the, um, sort of front area of it rather than all the way around the back but actually it could go all the way around the back couldn't it just in patches yeah because this bit's quite dark I know I'm not supposed to blow on it um you can't really tell that I'm adding these bits can you doesn't look like it's got like dots of purple on but yeah I don't think it needs blusher though do you I don't think you. I don't think you see the blush yet. Yeah. Does it look slightly less phallic? It does now. Oh, that's my tummy this time. How about a few white freckles painted on the side of her face? Oh yeah, white freckles would look nice. That's a good idea. Thank you for that suggestion, Ivana. Yeah, that's a nice idea because, like, I'm running out of dark things that I can kind of put on it. Like, bring it's, it's it all starting to. Sorry, bring it down a bit. That's it. As it's getting darker, yeah, like you won't see freckles in dark. So white is a very good idea. Just, just, in, see, I'm not actually doing this very neatly at all, am I? It doesn't look bad though. But like I say, you spend much longer working on this. And if it's, um, if it's dried, it's going to be much easier for you as well. 
because you're not going to have to worry about things breaking. Um, these are just really cheap ones that we sell, but they have like different sizes on each end. So depending on what size you want, it's easier for dots. So you just want to make sure you've got a tiny bit of so paint. Going, so going to it back up there. Watch it. Yeah, perfect. And then I can dab it on. So you might only get one or two at a time with it. Does it show up this? Yeah, you can see it on camera. Oops. I've maybe gone a bit wild with freckles. I was planning on it only putting a couple just on the cheek area. Just bring it out a bit, bit to you. That's it. Actually, no, they, they look really good. These might look alright on its back as well. You'll always notice, they will always say, oh, these might look alright, then before you know it, it's done. Sometimes I don't like it when I do add things, but it's only getting them on one side. Well, we'll do them on the other side, just maybe after after we finish the Facebook Live. Oh, does it look nice with the white drop, drop dots? So they kind of stand out a bit, don't they? So thanks for the white freckles idea. Yeah, that is really good. That's quite a lot. It's something little like that can change it completely. Yeah. I said I wasn't putting them on the other side, but I'm going to, because I'll forget later. Just bring it down a little bit. I'm always so thinking, yeah, I'll, I'll do so the other side and make it right after the Facebook Live, but I don't ever get back to doing it I just kind of forget about it so do it now yeah okay so like I say I'll leave this on here till it firms up so I'd probably give this maybe to the end of the day then at the end of the day I'll remove this and this and then I'll be able to to dust it a little bit more um again it depends on the temperature so if it's very hot in here it won't dry as quick or sometimes if it's actually a really cold day and it's quite damp in the atmosphere it won't it won't always set as quick as well so just bear that in mind when you are making your models guys okay do you want to spin that one round on it where, where it is can you see it uh, yeah keep spinning it and obviously like when it's set i can remove it from the polystyrene and i should be able to clip the um cocktail sticks from the bottom as well and stand it up so these ones we made on polystyrene we just put cocktail sticks in the front legs but we just cut those down you might even find that instead of cutting them down you can pull them out it just depends on how well glued in they are yeah. Just a yeah. Do you want to spin one more spin? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. 